What does truth have to do with ghost hunting? If you've ever watched those cable TV ghost hunting shows, that's a reasonable question. For the general public, the ghost hunting shows might be entertaining, but for legitimate investigation, that stuff is embarrassing. Zach Baggins is to paranormal investigation what the WWE is to wrestling. And that's fine. As long as we acknowledge it's just scripted entertainment and not real. First, we have to contend with the fact there are different types of truth which in itself seems contradictory to the whole notion of truth, right? I mean, either something is true or it isn't. Yet, we have objective truth and subjective truth. Objective truth recognizes certain facts are true regardless of personal opinion, perspectives, or biases. True no matter what. On the other hand, subjective truth is influenced by an individual's perspective and personal interpretation of reality. While objective truth can be verified through empirical evidence or logical reasoning, subjective truth is often based on personal experience or intuition and can vary widely between individuals. From my perspective, subjective truth isn't truth at all, it's just an opinion. Subjective truth might lead us to believe something is true even when it is not. The nuances and distinctions between objective and subjective truth are central to many philosophical debates about epistemology, the study of knowledge like the difference between thinking something is true versus knowing something is true, and metaphysics, the study of reality. When considering subjective truth, we must recognize that not all perspectives are equally valid or accurate. Some beliefs or perspectives may be based on inaccurate information or biases and may not hold up to critical examination. For example, the ancient Greek philosopher Plato argued one of the main problems with democracy is that it places power in the hands of the uneducated and uninformed masses. In his view, most people lack the knowledge and wisdom to make informed decisions about important issues, and they are easily swayed by demagogues and charismatic leaders who appeal to their emotions and prejudices. Huh. Bunch of uneducated people voting for a cultish figure based solely on emotions. Well, fortunately, we don't have to worry about that here in the United States. For any paranormal investigation to have credibility, the investigators must all be dedicated to truth, no matter where it takes them. And the first truth we must acknowledge is that in any alleged haunting, of all the things it could be, ghosts or other supernatural forces are the absolute least likely culprits. Also, even if someone isn't actively, knowingly, intentionally lying, that doesn't mean that what they're saying is objectively true. Our brains can be an enemy of the truth due to numerous psychological barriers. Such obstacles may include selective perception. Confirmation bias is an example of selective perception. This is a tendency to interpret and remember information in a way that conforms to one's pre-existing beliefs or biases. We humans tend to form our opinions before ever evaluating the evidence, and then, unless we are very careful, we tend to embrace evidence supporting our beliefs while rejecting any evidence in conflict with our beliefs. Internet search engines can be excellent research tools, but they are also more than likely to feed into our confirmation biases. As I'm sure you're aware, you can find support for even the most outlandish conspiracies in the internet. Was JFK assassinated by a secret cabal of right-wing extremists? Are lizard people living in our city sewers? Are birds even real, or are they actually just government spy drones? You know, you'll find those answers in the internet, which means if a vulnerable person who has difficulty with critical thinking also has an internet connection, it could be harmful to their mental health. And then there's availability heuristic. This is also known as availability bias. It's the tendency to overestimate the importance or frequency of events based on how easily they come to mind. This bias is a mental shortcut which assumes people tend to rely on information that is readily available in their memory, rather than seeking out additional data or considering the overall probability of an event. And illusory correlation. This is the tendency to perceive a relationship between two variables even if no such relationship exists. For example, a person might believe that people who wear glasses are more likely to be intelligent or nerdy. This is obviously connected to racism, where a person might believe that people of a certain race are more likely to be criminals or drug dealers. For clarity, wearing glasses or having a certain skin color are not factors in deciding intelligence or criminality. 
Another big one that comes up a lot is cognitive dissonance. This is the psychological term that refers to the mental tension that arises when a person holds two or more contradictory beliefs, attitudes, or values. This tension motivates the person to resolve the inconsistency, often by altering their beliefs or attitudes in some way. For example, a person who identifies strongly with a particular political party may experience cognitive dissonance if they encounter information that contradicts their beliefs or values. In order to reduce the discomfort of this inconsistency, the person would likely discount the conflicting information as biased rather than modify their beliefs. Now that's just a sample of barriers our own brains erect to prevent us from achieving objective truth. And when you begin adding emotions in the mix, those walls grow larger and stronger. Emotional attachment can make it difficult for a person to see or accept negative or contradictory information, even if that information is accurate. If you absolutely believe ghosts exist, you might be then more likely to see or think you've experienced a ghost when in fact what you've encountered is something called pareidolia. This is a psychological phenomenon in which the human brain perceives familiar patterns, shapes, or objects in random stimuli. Our brains are hardwired to recognize and interpret patterns. This is useful for helping us make sense of our environment. However, this can sometimes lead us to perceive patterns that aren't actually there. For example, we might think we see a ghostly form with a face and what is actually nothing more than the illumination from your flashlight gently landing on some dust in the air. And pareidolia isn't just limited to visual misinterpretations. It can also occur with sounds, smells, and even tastes. For instance, some people may hear words or phrases in white noise. I'll cover this in detail with a video discussing so-called ghost hunting tools such as the spirit box. I'll also be uploading a video about lies and dishonesty, covering tactics used by those who seek to deceive us. As a ghost hunter, our goal is to uncover the truth about the alleged paranormal phenomenon we are investigating. Critical thinking and skepticism are absolutely necessary so as to not fall victim to the pitfalls I've outlined here. It is also important to approach each investigation with an open mind, a willingness to follow the evidence wherever it may lead, and a commitment to uncovering the truth, even if it contradicts our preconceived notions or beliefs. Without a commitment to truth, our investigations risk becoming biased, inaccurate, or even fraudulent. In the near future, I'll be sharing several videos with you on the subject of truth, deception, and reality versus fiction. I hope you like this video and subscribe to learn more about ghost hunting. I'll also discuss true crime and mental health topics. I'm your host, Atten, and thanks for watching our channel at Haunted History Seattle.